I just want to know how you're doing. That's all. Because we've got something for you. I don't know if you've seen this before, but this is a tier list maker. This is where we get to uh, make our list of tiers. So the question here is, do we just go ahead and just say all Mythic Age God Powers go into the S tier, Heroic Age God Powers go into the A tier, uh, and then so on and so forth, such that uh, it's there's not it's not really a tier. It's just like this one is the best. Yada yada yada. Is that the way we do it? Is that is that the one? Is that is that what we reckon? Give link, please. Uh, all right, have have a link. Okay, so full screen. Sure. All right, we'll go full screen. No worries. Here you go. The full the full treatment. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna go ahead and just chuck all of the mythic age god powers up here and then we'll just be like that then 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 that'll have to do right are they all gonna fit ragnarok i think this is the best way to go about this honestly i think this is the best way and then we'll uh, and then we'll just sort them out as we go through. I think this is. I think we're gonna. I, I think we're not gonna regret this. I think this is gonna be great. Uh, uh, we're regretting it slightly. Why are there two flaming weapons? Why are there so many gold mines? Dush, 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 dush. So we don't miss out on anything. It's easy to do. We've already got that. We've already got that. We don't have that. All right. So those three are useless. Okay, so we'll start up with... Let's start with the archaic god power. Why not do a tier list for each? All right, fine. Let's just do that. That's a great idea. All right, we'll start with age one. Age one. It's just hard to see them all. That's the problem. So I need to put them all up here. I just need to see them all. Let's just put them here. Uh, without everything else being here. So I forget. I don't want to forget. Um, am I missing any? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm missing two. This one, and I think Great Hunt. Where's Great Hunt? Great Hunt, Great Hunt. Boom. Alrighty. So, Age One God Powers. What is. By far the best god power here in Age 1. Rain is a contender. Bolt is a contender. Prosperity is a contender. Shockwave is a contender. I don't think that Bolt is like up there anymore. Bolt used to be probably the best god power, but then it got nerfed. So it used to be able to kill Son of Osiris, used to be able to kill Nidhogg, used to be able to kill villages. So if this was 1.03, I put that S tier, but I'm going to just chuck it down in A tier because it doesn't quite have the same oomph as it once did. Now, of these three god powers, Shockwave also used to have that same oomph, but you get three of them and it's still like really, really good. So I actually think maybe Shockwave is the best archaic god power in the game because you get three of them, basically gives you some one fights, really, really good. I think Rain comes in next because it's such an identity thing for Ra Ra, synergizes really well with Rain with Shadoof. 
uh, and it just gives you so much extra food. And then Prosperity is going to sneak in here after because you just get so much gold from this. This god power effectively makes Isis the best god on water maps, on, on Anatolia and Midgard and any other kind of like mass water, uh, like lots of fish maps, which is easy to defend. Uh, and then also it it's just it's just such a really really good upgrade i mean uh god power um so now we go into the a tier bolt is in here of these god powers i think that i think that maybe i've part of me wants to put dwarven gold mine in here because i do think this is a really really good god power so I'm going to, but I'm going to put it at the bottom of A tier. The question is, where do these god powers go? So Great Hunt and Lua are effectively the same, except Lua can potentially steal from you or steal from your opponent. So in some cases, Lua is better than a Great Hunt. In other cases, it's worse. But either way, it brings the hunt into your base, which makes it very, very safe. So... Um, both of these god powers are very good together. Put them both next to each other. Bolt here is going to go up here because killing off something important is really, really good. Um, the reason why Dwarven Goldmine goes here is because, one, it it's 750 gold in the Archaic Age now. So that uh, unlocks a lot of really, really strong strategies for Thor, which are un, uh, which which if you didn't have Dwarven gold mine, you wouldn't be able to do those. Uh, but two, if you hold on to the Dwarven gold mine, it means that you don't have to leave your base for a second gold mine, which if you're playing Thor and you realize Thor's weaknesses, it really covers up Thor's weak one of Thor's weaknesses quite a lot. So it, it can be very, very, very good. Um, deconstruction here is also really good. Uh, and I think maybe deconstruction might even be above these two god powers but also i'm not sure it really really screws with people on water but it's not that important on land so because of that fact i'm just going to pop it into the b tier if it was a water map i would put this on a tier but because it's not always a water map it's not that useful on land sometimes you can get some nice deconstructions but oftentimes it doesn't do too much that's my opinion there um i think uh Gaia, man, Gaia Forest is such a good team game god power, but in 1v1s, it doesn't like, it doesn't do much, but it does help defend you. Uh, so I'm going to put this one in here. Uh, and I think honestly, like Sentinels, I think Spy is potentially the worst god power here. I think that Vision, and uh, I think that Vision and Spy are kind of both sitting down here is kind of less than like stellar god powers. I don't think they're they're very impactful on the game at all. Um, spy on an enemy army, spy on an enemy villager. Eh, very, very rare to see someone like get a lot of value out of spy. So I put it down the bottom. Um, Sentinels, Sentinels doesn't do much, but I'm going to put it above these just because. What do you guys think thus far? Do you reckon I'm, I'm all right? Yeah, so so I think that Dwarven Mine, just, just for... Um, What's Super Saint? Dwarven Mine is definitely below Great Hunt and Lua, but I think it's above Deconstruction. So I, I but I don't think that maybe this isn't close and I should be like this. Uh, maybe I should be like this. Oops. But I'm not 100% sure. Either way, it doesn't matter that much. So that's my first. That's my, that's my age one here. That's my age one. Let's go to age two. Age two. Boom. Boom. Uh, boom. 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 Oop. Boom. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Is there more? I think that's it. Three times four is twelve. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at these. 
Immediately, I'm thinking Valor is one of the strongest god powers here. Ceasefire is one of the strongest god powers here. Restoration is one of the strongest god powers. Shifting Sense is the strongest god power. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, that's... That's 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 the best four, do you guys reckon? Okay, so Shifting Sands for me is the best god power because it's so versatile. You can take you can kill enemy units, you can shift your own units, you can shift your own villages. Uh this thing can be used a myriad of different ways and uh, and I don't think that there's really a counter to this god power apart from maybe Underworld or Ceasefire in some situations, but <clears throat> Shifting Sands is definitely one of the most versatile god powers in the game, <clears throat> uh, and nearly every single one of its uses is very, very good. You can also use Shifting Sands to counter Son of Osiris, which is huge, uh, and that therefore it's going to be at the top. Ceasefire comes next. Ceasefire can either like a secure you a town center which is obviously really really big but more importantly b it counters ancestors it counters frost it counters uh any sort of destructive god power uh the only things that ceasefire doesn't do too well against is like uh fimble winter basically uh <laughs> and, and any uh, and ancestors eclipse right um but it's it's so so very good and effectively means that it can prevent an opponent from wanting to rush you. So it's very, very strong. Um, the next one we have uh, Valor. Now this god power is here because you get three of them. And it just gives you a ton of economy. This, this, this god power gives you a ton of economy. If you use Valor on three, three human units plus a citizen every single time, you're looking at probably netting yourself... Um, over the course of a game, you're probably looking at netting yourself, I, I would say, uh, well, well, like 450 times three. So uh, I can't do that math. 1,200, 1,350 resources just from, uh, just from Valor. Uh, and that's not, in count that's not counting the favor as well. So if you compare that to like Prosperity, uh, that gives you a thousand-ish gold, maybe, probably not a thousand gold, maybe like 800 gold, depending on how many villages or rain, it's about a thousand food. So this um, this is in that same kind of tier, but a bit better because uh, it's in the uh, classical age. Restoration is a very similar thing to, uh, to Valor in that it can give you a lot of HP back, which is effectively resources back that you've lost. Uh, it can be utilized to end games. Uh, the reason it's not in S tier anymore is because it's been nerfed and it doesn't last forever anymore. Uh, it used to last like seven seconds or something crazy, but now it's like five or four seconds. So it's going to check down here. So following this, this is where things get tough. I think Spider Lair is um, maybe an underrated god power and is definitely incredibly strong. So I'm going to put it below Restoration. It can potentially kill off 12 units. Um, and again, if we say 12 units and they roughly cost about 150 resources each, now, what am I doing my math? They're more like 100 resources each. You're looking at like 1,200 resources for spider layer and damage if you get all of their kills, but uh, not necessarily going to get all the kills, so it's going to be worse than Valor because of that reason. Um, okay, so the next God Pass, I don't think I would put any of these into the top tier. I think maybe Eclipse is pretty good. I think Eclipse, especially with combination of Ancestors, is great. But by itself, Eclipse is pretty lackluster. Uh, you can utilize some nice strategies uh, to to do things with, but by itself, it doesn't really do much. You get free Myth units that aren't going to help too much, but you can utilize Eclipse nice and early with your free Sphinx in order to get some good damage done early. But most of the time, I'm just going to put this one here. It's not the best. Maybe it's actually a little bit worse than Undermine even. Undermine's a pretty strong god power. It's just underutilized. So let's chuck that there. I think maybe, I think maybe Carnivora goes here. This is actually tough because a lot of these god powers are so bad that I don't know how bad they are. 
Healing Spring might actually be better than than this as well. Because this like might not get any damage done, but it definitely helps you on water. But if it only helps you on water, I have to bump it down a tier. So if you say it's like a B tier water god power, then it's going to be a C tier god power, if that makes sense. Because it's trash on land. It can help deny a town center, which is a very good use. But generally speaking, everyone who's getting a town center early is like Egyptian or Greek, and they both have heroes out. Uh, though the Greek players normally want to send their heroes forward, so you can definitely catch them off guard. So it maybe has some use, but I'm going to chuck it down there. Um, Pestilence. Is this god power worth putting up here? I don't think it is. I think this god power is fairly useless. Even in a rush, uh, your opponent can just throw down another building and they'll be able to catch back up when the thing is done in like 20 seconds. So I just don't think it's that useful. When you go areas, you're more going for the Cyclops. Um, and... Plague of Serpents is relatively useless except for on water. So therefore, if it's a C tier God Power, uh, maybe it's actually a B. I'll put this up here. I think it's. I think Serpents, Plague of Serpents, is pretty good on water. So B tier on water. So C tier overall because it's kind of a D tier land. So I'll put it right in, right in the middle there. And then Forest Fire is kind of useless. Sometimes Forest Fire is like a B, a B tier god power. Like if you get a really good use of forest fire, it's B tier, but the damage cap is actually quite low on forest fire. So even if you get a good forest fire, it's still not going to do all too much. So it's kind of a, the worst god power, unfortunately. So um, it can change the landscape of a, a game, which is pretty helpful. But I mean, for the most part, it's kind of useless. So unfortunately, <laughs> imagining forest fire, um, for the value that it could potentially get is going to remain as an imagining state of the game. Next one. Let's go to Heroic Age. Alrighty. We go this one, this way. Hold on. This one, this one, this one, this one, uh, this one, this one. This one. Um, this one. This one. This one. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Great. Alrighty. So the best uh the best heroic age god power is by far frost. Frost is easily the best heroic age god power. I don't think anyone has any debate about that. The question is what comes after Frost. What comes after Frost? I definitely think that Hesper's Tree is pretty good. F Flaming Weapons is very good. I think Curse is pretty good. I think Traitor is pretty good. I think Walking Woods is like okay, but I don't think it's S tier. I think Ancestors by itself is. I'm gonna I'm gonna imagine because uh, Ancestors by its. Let's put Ancestors at the top of A tier. If Ancestors gets combined with Ancestors Eclipse, both of the God Powers become kind of S ish tier, but by themselves they aren't. So I'll just bump it down a little bit um, because Ancestors Eclipse is really really good. Uh, Citadel is. A little bit worse than Hesperid's tree. Um, bronze is mm, probably B tier. Curse is really good. Underworld is really good. And Locust, if I use it, is D. If somebody else uses it, it's S+. So we have to put that somewhere in the middle. So let's just chuck it in the A tier. Okay, so let's just actually check this. So where do these god powers actually go? So I think this order is correct. I think that I think that 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 uh that order is correct. Ancestors is strong. Walking Woods is strong. Hesper's Tree is really strong. Curse is probably Curse is good. Curse is good, but I think Curse is a little bit worse than Chaos. Trader is you get three traders. It effectively means your opponent can't spam myth units at you until they're gone. So I'm gonna put it. Mm. It's e traders either better than chaos or worse because chaos converts a myth unit which is really good but you don't get to control it so it's and you don't get anything else on top of it 
So I'm going to put it below here. All right. Bronze can go... Oh, God. Is Citadel really the worst of the god powers? I mean, Citadel is definitely worse than Hesperus Tree because Hesperus Tree is 15 population versus Citadel, which is plus 10. Um... Obviously, you get to choose where that town population goes and you get a bluffed up town center. But let's move these down and we could probably even go ahead and just say these god powers go here. But, but Locust goes between S plus and, and B minus, right? So let's, let's put Locust here in A tier as right in between S plus and B minus. I don't know if I'm happy with this. I, 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 I don't know if I'm happy with this one at all. I think Walking Woods is really, really good. I think people underestimate how good this is. And thanks so much for the seven months, Benacla. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you. I think this might be right. I think this might be right. So, okay, let, let's just go... Th no, nah, let, let's, let's save that for something different. All right. So now we do Mythic Age God Powers. Uh... Mythic Age God Powers. They are the most powerful of the Mythic Age Powers. Is that it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Is it, does Norse only have three? No. Everyone should have three. What am I missing? Tartarian Gate. Okay. So. Well, this is obviously going to be at the top. This is obviously going to be at the top. This is potentially not at the top, actually. This is obviously at the top. This is potentially not at the top. This is worth 10 population. This is potentially at the top, but also maybe not. I'm going to go ahead and put it there. I don't know, actually. The rest of these god powers are question marks. I reckon this is an A tier god power. I reckon this is a B tier god power. I reckon this is an A tier god power. I reckon this is maybe a B tier god power, even though it's basically Lightning Storm. I'm going to make these both B tier god powers because they're basically the same thing, except Lightning Storm is better. Tartarian Gate is so good, but so bad at the same time. I'm going to put it an A tier. No, it's actually really good. The question is, where does Vortex sit in this whole thing? I'm talking about 1v1s, you noobs. Okay, so... Ragnarok is potentially the best god power because it's the only god power here that can bring you back from a completely lost position in a game you should not belong in. Every other god power, if you use it, yeah, it'll do a little bit of damage, but if you don't belong in the game, you're going to lose. Whereas Ragnarok could potentially help you win that, in that situation. Earthquake definitely belongs up here because there's no real good counter to it apart from some abuse. Um, so the reason why... Well, the, well, let's just talk about why Tornado is not S tier and Earthquake is. Tornado can get countered by getting Fortified Town Center's Masons, whereas Earthquake can't. If your opponent gets Fortified Town Center's Masons, the Tornado will not kill the Town Center by itself. So you have to use it elsewhere. Son of Osiris is an S tier god power because it's fucking hard to kill a good player, Son of Osiris, and he does a butt ton of damage. An unfair amount of damage. Okay, Nidhogg might be too far up on this list. It's really good, but it loses to a lot. So, so Nidhogg is really, really good against Greek. Norse. Really bad against Egyptian and Atlantean. Right? So against those two gods, I don't... It's like, I think maybe we chuck this at the bottom or, or the top of B tier just because it could be really good, it could be really bad. That feel fair? Um, I think Thimble Winter is a good god power. I don't think it's better than Tartarian Gate because Tartarian Gate lasts for longer than 30 seconds. Thimble Winter in 1v1. Yeah, yeah, it's better than everything else here. The amount of idle time on economy this 
this causes deals more economic damage than the damage that a lightning storm would do. So that's why Fimber Winter's up here. Uh, Plenty Vault is plus 10 population. In your economy. Immediately used. Don't have to think about it. There's only one use for it. Is it C tier? It might be better than C tier, but the reason you go for Hephaestus is for Colossus and Forge of Olympus. The Plenty Vault is like this decent god power that doesn't really impact the game very much. So I'm going to leave it down here. Question is, where does Meteor actually belong in this list? I think it's possibly above Plenty Vault, but below these two. And where does Vortex go? I think Vortex might be like, I'm going to put it right next to Tartarian Gate, above Tartarian Gate, because I think it's better than Tartarian Gate in a lot of situations. No, I think Tartarian Gate is better for the Atlanteans. So the reason why Vortex is good in team games is because you can split uh, you can attack really weak locations instantly. In 1v1, those weak locations don't exist as much, and you also have to set set that up. Whereas Tartarian Gate, you just place it down and it does the damage. Is Plenty Vault the worst Mythic Age God Power? I'm looking at it being like, I don't think it is. But it's not... See, the thing is, we're not talking about Hephaestus. Because Hephaestus is one of the better Mythic Age gods. But Hephaestus is good not because of Plenty Vault. And remember, all of these god powers are good. Plenty Vault earns the amount most mythic god powers deal in damage. That's true. All right, no, I see ya. We're going to put you above Lightning Storm and, and, and uh, Implode. But damage dealt versus damage gained or resources gained is not the same thing. But you do get it forever. This is the only one I'm unsure about. I think everything else is in the right spot. I think the damage that Fimble Winter does is better than the, the damage you gain from Plenty Vault. I definitely think that all these god powers I'd rather. Let's put it above Nidhogg. Let's put it below Nidhogg. There we go. That's where we're going to leave it. Done. That's what I reckon the tier lists are. So, uh, is that even remotely close to what you guys would think? That's what we're going with. I'll say why the, the tornado is not S tier because it gets countered by uh, Masons and Fortified Town Centers. Whereas Earthquake doesn't. And yeah, you can kill off some villages, but I don't think it's I don't think Tornado is as good as Son of Osiris. I think the reason why Horus is better than Osiris is because of the Horus upgrades for your spearmen. Tornado isn't the reason. All right. That's it. That's all we got. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, hey guys, hit the follow button. Hit the like button. What are you waiting for?